Okay, three more companies. First up, Blazing DB. Presenting for Blazing DB, we have Rodrigo Aramburu and Felipe Aramburu and William Malpica. Welcome back, guys. Hey, everybody. I'm Rodrigo, CEO and one of the co-founders of Blazing DB, a next-generation SQL database that runs on video graphics cards. Two years ago, my CTO Felipe and I had an analytics and modeling consultancy. And we landed a contract with a $10 billion pension fund. We had to bring billions of rows of data together for a fraud detection model. And the joining of these huge tables was taking our enterprise database server 35 hours to run. And we had to run it again and again and again. So we started banging our heads against the desk trying to figure out what we were going to do. And we thought, wait a minute. What if we massively distribute the processing of these huge table joins onto video graphics cards? So we did. And that 35-hour monstrosity came down to 30 seconds. That is the power of GPUs. And Blazing DB unlocks that power for enterprises who want massive scale, hyper fast SQL. Or in layman terms, it is a matrix optimized distributed data store on massively parallel vector processing units. <laughs> Blazing DB is a server side software. You can deploy it into the cloud or an appropriately configured on premise cluster. We offer a variety of interfaces so that you can connect your code or your workbenches to Blazing DB. We also have our own Blazing DB workbench. So you can connect remotely and securely to a Blazing DB cluster. Can we switch to the demo, please? So Blazing DB's value proposition isn't our web application workbench. It's our hardcore next generation engine. So let's put a big data set into the database. In fact, we have every New York City yellow cab ride since the year 2009. That's over a billion rows of data. And if we want to ask a question like how many rides there were in a particular day, in 390 milliseconds, we get an answer back. If we ask something like how much revenue was generated or taxes collected over the same amount of time, right? 378 milliseconds on a billion rows of data. That's insane. But the proof is in the numbers. Could we go back to the slides, please? So we ran an industry series of queries from an industry standard benchmark, TPCH. And when we compared Blazing DB against Amazon's petabyte scale data warehouse Redshift, we run over five times faster. When we compare ourselves to Postgres, 80 times. Or MySQL, the most common database in the world, we're talking 140 times faster. Next slide, please. Now, let me tell you how we're able to do any of this. It's by leveraging a paradigm shift in computing and utilizing highly specialized processors such as GPUs. You see, graphics processors were built for huge matrix math calculations. It's the reason they build the world's video games so well or have made a huge splash in artificial intelligence. So our original insight was take a table in a database and turn it into a matrix. And now, instead of processing on our quad core CPU, we're distributing that processing to 2,000 graphics processing cores. And that's on our laptops. Our typical enterprise server has 10,000 graphics processing cores per rig. But we're not done there. We scale. Our engine is fully distributed, distribu splitting the data and the computation across multiple servers. Maximally efficient. BlazingDB actually self-configures itself based on the hardware in your cluster, the data stored in your database, or the usage patterns of your team. And finally, it's SQL. The reason we chose this was to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. But the truth of the matter is businesses live on SQL. Last year, businesses spent $1.2 billion on NoSQL databases, but they spent $38 billion on SQL. And the big data SQL market is showing double-digit growth rates. Our technology and vision is inspiring. 
It's the reason huge companies are coming to us with severe data challenges. And now we're running six different pilot Blazing DB clusters in enterprise, three of which are Fortune 100 companies. This month, we launched our first production Blazing DB cluster for our first customer one model, a workforce analytics company that broke Redshift with intense math. And now with Blazing, they're able to offer products that were never possible. But that's not all. You see, Blazing DB was built for the cloud, but it actually runs on any computer with the appropriate specs. So effective immediately, we're releasing a community edition of Blazing DB, a GPU accelerated database that is free to use for life. So if you want to process millions of rows in seconds on your laptop, please download it, let us know what you think, and have fun crunching a ton of data. Thank you very much. All right, good job. Judges, what do you think? By the way, wonderful design on your presentation. Oh, thank you. Our designer's going to love that. Yeah. Um, so how do you continue to outperform Amazon? So a 5x lead is good, but how do you keep ahead? So one of the things that we're going to start having to do soon is operating directly on compressed data. So right now, we compress and decompress using the GPUs. And we're working on being able to operate on that data without decompressing it directly on the GPUs. I'd actually like to add to that. So our performance speeds are a raw engine. There's a million optimizations that we don't do inside the engine that would make it dramatically faster. We actually have to go over the entire data set on almost all of our queries. There's no and index. Exactly. And so because of that, like our raw engine is getting 5x. But if we start doing a few of these different ideas, optimizations, and things that we just as a team don't have the bandwidth to handle, we're going to be increasing that time and time again. We actually call it. Um, we we'll call it our kick butt factor on stage, but this is like a number that we will manage and monitor month over month to see how our engine's performing and how it's developing over time. We actually want to share this eventually. So who do you think will be your target sweet spot part of the market, right? Because you're going to give it away on the low end. Um, and then on the high end, there are a lot of people who are using cloud services already where there are services, maybe they're lower performance, but they have a solution that's, that's integrated. So who do you think will be the sweet spot for your product? Yeah, so enterprise is definitely the place that it's working the best. Those are typically the places where the CIO, CTOs are kind of being kept up at night in terms of what is infrastructure going to look like across the next five, 10 years of data growth. Um, so we're actually getting involved with really innovative groups within these companies, right, of our pilot customers that are trying to be ahead of that kind of data curve um, and start thinking about it. So that's the majority of our actual activity is on enterprise. This community edition is we realized a lot of people want to play with Blazing DB. And you know what? Go for it. Like, we just want people to start doing it. And if that itself starts becoming something interactive in prospect generation, that's you know, just more for us, I guess. So how do you, if it's enterprise as your target, what's your go-to-market strategy? Are you going to have a sales force? Are you going to team up with somebody? that has the channel? What is your distribution model? Yeah, so right now, it's honestly just boots on the ground. Um, it's me just hustling, trying to get to talk to people. Our investor network, our accelerator network, has helped get us involved with a variety of different enterprise companies. Moving forward, our strategy is heavily focused on channel partners. So for example, I come from a background at Deloitte Consulting. And so we've been talking with big four firms about the implementation of data warehouse technologies. Right? Like These are very large scale, complex projects that require a variety of different analysts and uh, individuals to support that entire migration process. So for us, consultancies make a lot of sense. We're also talking with different data center providers that are looking for value added services and products within those data centers. Um, and we're also talking a little bit with high performance computing software providers who also are trying to see a way of adding our database into their offering for different needs and use cases of their customers. Oh, there's also marketplaces on the cloud distributors and providers. Um, we haven't made those available yet, but they're just like images that allow you to spin up blazing DB clusters. That's also another effective way to just start getting um, small teams you know, up and running very quickly. How specialized does the hardware need to be? Um, not very. It has to be NVIDIA graphics cards. So that's one of the main things. But other than that, our servers are pretty agnostic. Do you want to take that, actually? I mean, yeah. That's so depending on what kind of performance you're looking for, you may or may not want to have SSDs or 
you know, it, it, depending on your problem, there are different kinds of configurations you want, but it'll like run. a pick your bottleneck situation, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly correct. Depending on your bottlenecks, you'll pick different kinds of storage, and Blazing will actually use different usage patterns of that storage based on what kind of storage you have. Mm -hmm. So but if you've got spinning disk, it'll try to do more sequential reads. If you've got SSDs, it'll take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So do you think that SQL will integrate this capability themselves by just using graphic capabilities? Um, so we re-engineered this thing from the ground up. So the GPUs was kind of like the big inflection point for us, but there's a variety of different things that we've done very low level that allow us to actually effectively utilize the GPUs. So it's not something where you can just say, hey, your processing taking too long, so that job, go to the GPU, and we're done. Um, our fundamental in infrastructure and architecture was built to be able to leverage this heterogeneous kind of hardware reality. Um, so no, I do not think it's just a retrofit. Some people even do that, and you do get great performance increases, but it's definitely limited in terms of the theoretical reality. How big a data set do you need before the speed difference is really significant? It's typically about 100 gigabytes or higher. Um, if you're dealing with lower than that, well, on your personal rig, if you're dealing with like a million rows in MySQL, yeah, you should try us out, check it out, see what's going on. Um, a million rows is where stuff start, kind of starts getting slow, but about 100 gigs and up is where you start noticing stuff. So how does this differ from you know, similar servers that like IBM has created for like AI workloads that use like NVLink, uh, NVIDIA's link? So how, how does that compare again performance-wise? So NVLink is a technology that somebody like us can take advantage of, right? It just gives us more throughput. But um, actually, mm, go on, sorry. What was that other technology that you mentioned? Uh, IBM has created some specialized servers using NVLink for like high, heavy AI workloads. So it's like if you're going to go to a customer that maybe is looking at that or, or yours for having, handling heavy loads of big, big data sets to like train an AI or, or apply ML to it, what is, what's your pitch over something like that? Yes, so like the Open Power Initiative, for example, of IBM and NVLink, yeah, we actually are talking and working with those individuals. So they actually solve a ton of problems inside our stack. Uh, they gave us much more bandwidth, much more capability and access to the GPUs. So those are technologies that benefit us. They're actually moving the ecosystem of this heterogeneous hardware uh, forward. So there's, there's not a competition there. It's, yeah. Synergy. <laughs> what, <clears throat> what's the licensing framework that you've adopted? Because you talked about the community edition. So are you open sourcing that, or is the entire system open sourced? No, it's a binary. It's a free binary that you can use. So it's not open sourced. Um, it's actually limited to one server as of right now. So, okay. so yeah. okay. So it's closed source software. That's correct. And so one of the things that I wonder about is that I mean you're addressing ETL applications, and there are many of those as far as I know, that I.O. is really the bottleneck, not compute. So can you talk a little bit about the use cases for which you're well suited and those that you're not well suited for? Uh, could we also answer the I.O. kind sure. of question? So go for okay. it. So no. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll say that we're focused on read I.O. because we are an analytics database. Um, so okay. we've basically, our job is we have this awesome code processor. It's the GPU. How can we keep it full, right? That's the hardest part of working with GPUs. How do you keep your GPU always running? Because you've got the PCIe bottleneck, which is not IO bottleneck, and you've got the disk uh, bottleneck. We solve that in part by compressing and decompressing on the GPUs, so we get higher throughput to the disk, and we get higher throughput to the GPU that same way. Um, in the future, the technology is improving. The bus is getting fatter. The, these limitations that we have now, these bottlenecks, are disappearing with things like NVLink, for example. Mm -hmm. And then with regards to places where we're fairly strong, we're particularly strong on really large aggregates. So that's some averaging counts, you know, kind of descriptive style statistics. Um, large scale transformations, like a lot of math inside your SQL statement, and then joins. If we're joining really large tables, that's also another place where our engine starts really showing off interesting value proposition. Does it matter what kind of data it is? Is it uh, agnostic to the type of like structured, unstructured, when you talk about scale? Mm -hmm. It's a SQL database, so it is structured data. This is tabular data, whatever can fit inside a tabular model. Um, when we t kind of talk about the data growth over time, there's a lot of talk about what structured data growth looks like and the utility of structured data growth versus unstructured data growth. Utility of structured is typically dramatically higher for a variety of reasons. Unstructured, there's different use cases, different kind of positives out of that. 
Okay. Any other questions? Oh. Yeah, maybe um, just mention a little bit about the business model and how you imagine selling to the enterprises. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the, the business model. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. kind of how you imagine pricing it um, to enterprises. Yeah. So our current pricing model is a direct markup on servers. This is actually just kind of our early adopter plan that we were able just to get out the road. So it's 100% whatever you pay for GPU servers running Blazing DB. Um, moving forward, we're actually looking at trying to find ways. So we have a bunch of different kind of statistical heuristics. William has a lot of experience in computer vision pattern classification. So actually trying to identify preemptively queries that the customer would rather have faster and say, hey, why don't you spin up another two servers? Or not even that. Why don't we just make it 10% faster and you don't even have to worry about the servers. The dynamic load balancing of these different configurations handles it. And from a customer perspective, it's speed, scale. That's what I pay for. That's what I care about. How much more expensive is it? Um, so for example, the customer one model, they're reducing their costs about 30% month over month over Redshift with ours. And they're getting five times faster queries. So that's like, even if you charge more, the reduction in processing time leads to savings on power? Or? No, 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 no. So when you buy Redshift, you're buying a server that has a software license integrated into the pricing model, right? And that's how most of these like, database added value services are. So when we're talking just the server, the server itself is not that expensive. I mean, it's a, it's a premium server. But with our license integrated, they're still saving that kind of money month over month. All right, anything else? You, should, right. you guys oh. should probably get green shirts because yeah. red shirts. Yeah, is there like symbolism well. in <laughs> the color coding? <laughs> these, these were our first shirts. They're a little fun. I thought it looked even if we did what, the, you know, <laughs> the picture on yeah, the Red shirts tend to die off really early. It's so a nice just, yeah. symmetry. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We worked on it. What's, what's the picture on the back? Oh. Do, it, do it, do it, do it. GPUs are my guy. speed. Yeah. Unfortunately, someone pointed out that our chemical diagram does not define chirality for anyone who knows. This is like a mirror image, so this could be Vicks VapoRub. <laughs> wow, you guys are nerds. Um, great. <laughs> All right, give it up for Blazing Thanks. DB.